Shalom family of Yahuwah. Welcome Mishpoka to another restoration of all things message. The new covenant explained according to the scriptures, part one. Because this is the most important topic that is so misunderstood, today we will discuss the new covenant in detail to help us grasp and understand Abba Yahuwah's plan for his people through his word by the leading of the Ruach for application, for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. That you in Yahushua will be made complete, made whole, and be equipped for every good work. From the beginning, humanity was given a prescribed order to follow, but because of our heart's condition, we have failed Yahuwah. We are fast approaching the start of the tribulation. Yahushua wants everyone in this last wicked generation to have clarity, understanding, and knowledge on this matter. As bride candidates, it is a time of urgency to make yourself ready as we will go through a time of testing of your faith, trust, and belief based on His truth, His standards, His definitions, and His prescribed order, path, and course. Which covenant are you under? Or which covenant are you part of? What order are you following? What are the terms and conditions of the covenant that you guard over? Is it a new or renewed covenant? And why is this important? What priesthood was Abraham under? Is the new covenant the everlasting covenant? There are many covenants. Which one is the old covenant? And last, has the new covenant been fulfilled? If not, when will it be? All of these key details we will see in this observation. Beloved, Hasatan, the enemy of our soul, has from the beginning lied, distorted, and beguiled us to miss the mark and not be in covenant relationship with our Creator. His aim is to first take away your emunah, your belief, and your love towards Yahuwah, so He can rob you of your covenant promises. The deceptive programming, the famine of the word of Yahuwah, and the strong delusion is affecting many today. Before we begin, we must first and foremost make sure that we give all proper respect and honor to Yahuwah for sending His ultimate love gift, Yahushua HaMashiach, the Lamb of Yahuwah, for the atoning sacrifice for the nation of Yasharal. Father Yahuwah, it has come to my attention that many are not taught about the new covenant of marriage and how it applies to our salvation. Father Yahuwah, there's confusion in the camp and we know you're not the author of confusion. Father, I'm asking that you give us clarity. Father, I ask you to let this message lead to a true repentance to those who have broken the covenant unknowingly to remove the vain traditions of men and repair the breach of the covenant that has been broken so that they can fulfill your word and walk as royal priests, fulfilling the order of Melchizedek that you have called us to be. In Yahushua's name, Amen. Let us begin. A covenant is often compared to a contract or an agreement, but a scriptural covenant goes much deeper. Yahuwah's covenant touches both moral and spiritual obligations. It is a covenant of life and death to the party who violates, to the party who breaks the conditions. The scriptures tells us that Yahuwah acts through covenants. Brit is the Hebrew word for covenant. It means to cut. More precisely, Brit means to cut until bleeding occurs. A covenant has a proposal acceptance, blood ratification, and a consuming meal, meaning the Father draws us into Himself. Then we have free will to accept. The blood ratification is the blood of the Lamb of Yahuwah. And the consuming meal is the Pesach on Passover on His calendar. This is not Easter, which is at a different date, a different feast. We may renew the covenant vows at will as we reach another level, as we move in the Ruach and the Spirit. A covenant has terms and conditions. Our testament towards the covenant conditions is determined by our actions. 
that declares us as hot, which is the great in the kingdom, cold as the least of the kingdom, or lukewarm as in the fight and rebellious. I have asked many mature, loving Christians on what covenant they are part of and what is the sign of the covenant they keep. And they simply do not know they are lost because their pastors have not taught them the true doctrine on this subject. The answer I normally get is that I'm in the covenant of Jesus. And as you will find out today, there is no such covenant. The Jesus of the scriptures who we call Yahushua is the mediator. There is no covenant by his name. Today, we will refer to Yahushua as the Elohim of the Hebrews. We will discuss his covenant and his terms and conditions from a Hebraic perspective. A Brit is a covenant. And in Paleo Hebrew, the pictograph Bet is a picture of a tent, but also represents the family which resides inside the tent. It can be a house as the house of Yasharal. Another example is the sheepfold of Messiah. Are you within his borders? Are you inside or outside the sheepfold? Meaning, are you in the covenant of Messiah or are you standing outside? The resh is a picture of a head. We know that Messiah is our covering. He is our leader. He is our teacher. He is our Melchizedek kinsman redeemer. If you combine these, they have a meaning of family of heads. Meaning he is the first fruits and we are the first fruits in him. The plant families of grains such as wheat and barley have clusters of seeds at the top of the stalk called heads. These grains have a huge impact on his feast and our identity in him. The yod, the arm, represents the outstretched arm of Yahuwah. And to whom has the arm of Yahuwah been revealed? Isaiah 53 verse 1. Father is restoring all things and part of the restoration is to reveal the authentic Messiah and his doctrine. The Ta, the Ta is the sign of truth and shalom between the grantor of the covenant and my people who obey his voice. But we also know that Messiah is the Aleph and the Ta, he is the first and the last. The sign of the covenant has always been the Shabbat and will always continue until eternity. This is according to Isaiah 66 verse 22 to 23. If anyone is not keeping the seventh day Shabbat day of rest, he will not enter into his rest. And therefore you are not guarding the covenant and are not in obedience to the author of salvation because you are not wearing the ring of the covenant. The ring of the covenant is the Shabbat. Recently the father showed us that the Shabbat is not on Saturday, that it's actually on Thursday. If the Ruach has moved you to search out this matter, I have videos on this channel that talk about this. And if you need a calendar, reach out to me, I will send you one. Do we really want someone else to determine our destination? Do not follow me. Follow Messiah only. I am not a pastor. I am not a prophet. I am not a Torah teacher. Messiah is all of that. Messiah said, follow no man, but let me teach you. Meaning he, the Ruach, is going to teach you. I study his word daily and know we're all called to be watchmen and to fulfill the great commission mandate with Messiah and us. And this is what I'm doing. I'm just a follower of the way, being led by the Ruach to make videos to give him all the splendor. This is not about me at all. This is to edify the body and those who seek truth and leave the matrix and come out of the vain traditions of men. Many will say they do not want part of the old covenant for that has been replaced with the new. Many religious leaders today even go as far as to teach their followers to completely avoid the so-called Old Testament, the old covenant that has been waxed away. But what do the scriptures actually say? One very important bit of information we might not realize is that the covenant between Yahuwah and his people is actually the marriage contract between the bridegroom and the bride. 
a few of the highlights of this marriage contract are found in the New Covenant writings. However, most of its promises, its provisions, and its terms and conditions are hidden in the Tanakh, called the Old Testament writings. Many of the watchmen of today, the ministers, the pastors, the rabbis, the preachers, the YouTubers, and other spiritual leaders continue to smite the bride unknowingly. They killed spiritually those that are fed that do not have a foundation built upon a rock and therefore do not know Yahuwah and his way. The goal of the enemy of our souls is to use these leaders who are well-meaning but are spiritually asleep to do his work out of ignorance, out of lack of Yahuwah's knowledge of Torah, a rejection of being priest to him has occurred according to Hosea 4.6. Ezekiel 34 verse 1 through 3 tells us that the word of Yahuwah, which is Messiah, came to Ezekiel. And he said, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Yasharel. Prophesy and say to them, even to the shepherds, thus says Yahuwah Elohim, woe to the shepherds of Yasharel who have been feeding themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourself with wool, you slaughter the fat ones, but you do not feed the sheep. As a result of this, through ignorance of the new covenant, much of what some leaders are teaching today is a mixture of scriptural truths mixed with the vain traditions of men and doctrines of men. Feeding upon this mixture removes the bride qualities from those who desire to be among the bride company and prevents them from being prepared as the bride for her husband according to Revelation 12 2. And for this reason, we must begin our observation of the new covenant with a warning. Yeshayahu 56 verse 10 and 11 tells us that his watchmen are blind. They are all without Torah knowledge. They are all silent dogs. They cannot bark. They dream. They're lying down. They love to slumber. The dogs, which represents demon-possessed, have a mighty appetite. They never have enough, but they are shepherds who have no covenant understanding. They have all turned to their own way of their own heart. Everyone being fixated on his own gain. Money. Yahushua told us you either serve one or the other. Love Yahushua or hate money. Mammon. Isaiah is telling us that these watchmen that are blind are those that walk after the flesh in the spirit of error. They're in disobedience to his ways. And these watchmen are the matrix system pastors, most of them 501c, who are also Freemasons. Song of Songs chapter 5 verse 6 and 7 summarizes this perfectly. I open to my beloved, the Messiah, our husband. But my beloved had turned and gone. My soul failed me when he spoke. I sought him, but found him not. I called him, but he gave no answer. The watchmen, the spiritual leaders, found me as they went about the city. They beat me, they bruised me, and they took away my veil. Beloved, the veil signifies a bride set apartness, her virginity, her loyalty to the covenant, her modesty, and her preparation for the marriage. And these watchmen have profaned her, and they have made her unclean. They have discouraged her from continuing to seek Yahuwah in all his ways. And this is what's happening everywhere today. So let no man teach you. The bride is hereby warned that only by studying the scriptures for oneself, you can break free of the modern day paradigms, the religious spin that the doctors of men have put on scripture, the leaven of the Pharisees, twisting the scriptures to mean what they do not say. Only then can a bride prepare herself and make herself ready, according to Revelations 19.7. The Messenger of the Covenant very seldom do I hear about the messenger and the covenant and his identity. Today you will know. Malachi chapter 3, 1 and 2. Behold, I am sending my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. This is Yahukanan, John, 
the mercer of the Tevilah. Then suddenly the master who you are seeking comes to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, said Yahuwah of hosts. And who is able to bear the day of his coming? And who is able to stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. Beloved, this message is of high priority. If you want to be considered part of the bride, many believe that being saved is everything you need to be to be the bride. However, salvation has not been taught from a true perspective of scripture. Salvation is a process towards redemption at his coming. We must have works defined by Torah towards Abba Yahuwah and to our neighbors. Many who are listening to me right now have entered the covenant by the blood of the Lamb of Yahuwah, but have broken the covenant since your confession of belief, since your confession of faith. Messiah is able to refine you with fire. He's able to burn off and purge all those impurities, all the things that are not of Him, so that you can make yourself ready. I ask you to please pray and seek Yahushua and ask Him to reveal truth and to reveal to you the inherited lies so you can start unlearning them. Because unlearning them is very hard. That is the hardest part is to unlearn the lies. Again, being saved is not guarding over the covenant. Being saved is this. Before Messiah, when we were not even reading the scriptures for ourselves, and we were in the world, in the clubs, dealing drugs, doing whatever you were doing, you were breaking every commandment Yahuwah has. You were breaking every commandment of Yahushua. And then at one point, you might have had a burning bush experience and he drew you into himself. And you made a commitment to be saved through his blood and recognize him as your blood atonement savior, your kinsman redeemer. So we are saved from our past sins by his great favor, according to Romans 3.25. After we are saved, we are to walk like he walked, meaning we are being saved. We are being set apart with fear and reverence to Yahuwah daily. Because without set apartness, no man will see Yahuwah. If we endure to the end with Messiah in us, walking in His truth, walking in the Spirit, obeying His voice and observing the covenant and guarding over it with our lives, we will be saved and that is a promise from Yahushua in Matthew 24, 13. Just a little side note. Just so you know, salvation in the new covenant includes deliverance, rescue, safety, and preservation of life. Many today, however, use additional Bible words and concepts for the word salvation, resulting in mixed doctrines, resulting in error and confusion. As a result, the main focus is always salvation and never covenant. This is based on a huge misunderstanding on the theological definitions from the theology, from the seminaries. The Father's desire today in this wicked generation is to find a bride suitable for His Son. Bride candidates who are making themselves ready by knowing Him and who guard the covenant Father's looking for those who love His Son. That is, He is looking for those who keep His commandments, according to John 14, verse 15. He is looking for those who know His Son, who know the Messiah is the one who gave the commandments to Moses. Thus, Father is looking for those who are born again with a heart of flesh, who have the Messiah birthed within them. Those who are known by their fruits and who are peculiar people and who demonstrate that they know the identity of His Son. By their obedience of Messiah's commandment written in the law, the Torah of Moshe, and in their hearts, a true Kodeshim is known by His fruits. And He does not have an identity crisis in Messiah, Yahushua. It is not the bright candidate who people should see, but they should see the light of Messiah in them. In keeping with the covenant topic, 
We must understand covenant law and dominion. Because Satan questioned and opposed and revolted against Yahuwah's authority, dominion, and Torah. He knew his system and he inverted it. He inverted Yahuwah's system in what we call the matrix. We are about to enter the tribulation. And you will have to make an initiation to enter the new world order of Lucifer. What I'm saying to you is that there are two covenants that you can partake in. Yahushua's covenant or Satan's covenant. The reset is transitioning this world into Lucifer's world, where the Ruach is now restraining and is stepping back to allow Satan to do his thing. Meaning that this world that's coming, this great reset, is gonna be full 100% Satan's world here on earth. It's gonna be hell on earth, people. You will have to make an initiation to enter into the system to buy or sell. There's no way around it. So this video is important for you to follow through all the way. Please watch to the end. This Babylonian system operates in both Roman canon law and Talmudic Jewish law. It is a very sophisticated construct of sin, lies, and deceit. The goal is to take our sovereignty, our dominion of the earth, and our souls by consent or conquest through covenant means. There is a law of nature in this universe that compels the dark occult to first gain our consent before trespassing against us, because they believe this protects them from the natural laws of cause and effect. They offered and we accepted, so it's all fair. A lack of response to an action is often taken as an approval of that action. And there is an old Latin proverb that says, he who is silent when he ought to have spoken and was able to, is taken to agree. Silence is considered by many to be a form of consent. And so it is through a veiled performance of the revelation of the method technique that these dark occultists believe they are gaining our consent, what we know as predictive programming. This is done through all forms of media and can be very subtle so that nobody notices. But the subconscious mind notices everything and can easily be programmed through repetition. And so these controllers repeat whatever it is that they want us to accept as reality. Because these images are delivered to us through entertainment, they elicit no meaningful response of opposition or resistance. And so we accept them subconsciously. It's a mind trick, and it works by keeping everyone locked in a spectator state. This causes what is known as paradigm blindness, which is when a person is incapable of seeing any reality other than what they've already been exposed to by the media. This paradigm blindness will cause a person to get emotionally triggered whenever confronted with an alternative point of view that they have not been programmed to accept. It's a very powerful mind trick, and the solution is quite simple. We need to stop living as spectators of someone else's reality. We need to start creating our own reality. The messenger of the covenant is our covering, and he gives us a covenant. And if we guard this covenant, then we will have dominion of all the earth. Man must never lose his covering and order. Adam lost it. Satan caused Adam to lose it. And Messiah who shall by his blood regained it from Satan. But soon after he died, Satan came against us and deceived us because he knows the covenant terms and conditions and law and dominion. And now we have not lost the dominion. We just don't know how to operate in the force, in the power of the Ruach to obtain the dominion. That's what Satan has done through inherited lies and vain traditions of men. But praise be to Yahuwah that He has restored all things and He is restoring this great force today because we will walk in power and in dominion. Because in the tribulation, some of us will walk in power and dominion because we will walk in covenant status with the Most High. This world, this matrix that we live in, is the world of the dead. 
Do you know what I'm talking about? The Matrix. Do you want to know what it is? The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now, in this very room. You can see it when you look out your window or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? That you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. But we serve a living Elohim of the world of the living. That's why he said this world is not ours. You are their property, beloved. Every human creature is an animal and he is subject to the Roman pontiff. The Vatican, who has been infiltrated by the synagogue of Satan, has authority over the temporal and spiritual power through maritime law of the sea of all the corporations and persons. Examples of this is your birth certificates, your driver's license, the IRS, the banks, even churches. Anywhere you are asked to sign by the X, it is their contract, their covenant that you're signing. If we're truly walking in covenant, and we, have, and we are filled with the Ruach HaKadosh, our word has power and authority, and we don't need a signature. Our word is everything, because if we lie, we're lying to the Ruach HaKadosh. In the Torah, in Deuteronomy 28, it tells us that we are the creditors and the lenders, and that Yahuwah will make us the head and not the tail, and we shall go up and not down. He tells us that if we only take heed to his commandments, in him, we are always above and never beneath with a boot at our throats as it is today. Satan as the administrator and grantor of this Babylonian matrix has caused us all to forsake the covenant terms of Yahuwah. And for this, Satan has enslaved us to our taskmasters as debtors. You must forsake the world of the dead and be part of the living, beloved. The Unum Sanctum of 1302 just declares that the popes have all authority over every human being on earth. The Unum Sanctum of 1302 that was created through the authority of Satan, it gives every human being on this earth their sovereignty to the popes. Meaning, our salvation and Messiah is to be determined by them. Revelation 13 2, the dragon Satan gave him his power and his seat and great authority. These are the Roman pontiffs and we've learned that the Roman pontiffs are the high priests of Satan. This is the system that Satan has created to enslave us. But what he did, this system is the system that Satan inverted. This system is the one that Yahuwah uses. Let me show you. The grantor of the covenant is Yahuwah and instead of canon law and Talmudic law it's the Torah the written Torah that Messiah gave to Moses and the executor the executor is Messiah Yahushua he's the executor of the father's will which is the Torah he is the executor of the father's will which is written in the Shamaim as it is on earth the beneficiaries are the people of the covenant and the trustee who empowers us when we trust them is the Ruach HaKadosh because he gives us the power those that are not keeping the covenant are the lukewarmers they're part of the matrix of sin these are the chattel these are the pro this is the property in Messiah we are made free from these taskmasters Revelation 17, 3 and 6, I saw a woman sit upon the scarlet beast, and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the Kodeshim, the set apart ones, and with the blood of the martyrs of Yahushua. Beloved, it is not the Catholic Church. It is Judaism. 
the lion pen of the scribes. And in the book of Revelation, it says that many will be beheaded just like John. Those that are part of the matrix have sold their birthright as first fruit. Who else sold their birthright? Edom. So Edom wants you to sell yours. Why? Because he wants the inheritance. He doesn't want you to have the inheritance. He wants to have it for himself through Satan's help. Our testimony to the trust, the covenant, determines our allotted inheritance to the kingdom, the millennial kingdom that's coming. And to sum it all up, beloved, the new covenant in Yahushua's blood is an everlasting testamentary trust that involves a written lawful binding contract which are the terms and conditions that binds all parties in divine jurisdiction and law. It includes the grantor, the executioner, the trustee, and the beneficiary. The contract agreement is made by confession of mouth to agree to the terms and conditions according to Romans 10. In Hebrew, it is called a ketubah, the 10 covenant words of marriage between the bride and the groom with the father as judge and grantor. Failure to keep your word and violate the agreement will result in you being cut off from among his people. When we know Yahuwah and his will, we will honor this contract voluntarily out of love for him. Then Abba Yahuwah will establish you as his people and as his nation, and he will be your Elohim. And he then will entitle you to the promises given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in Messiah. Why were you not taught this in the church? You were told that a one-time salvation by faith granted you all the promises. This is what Satan has done, beloved. He has inverted everything to make you feel like you got it made. We don't. We're just learning. This is just the tip of the iceberg that we're learning. We must believe in His blood atonement with Messiah in us and obey all His commandments and walk in His image and in His order, which is the order of Melchizedek. As a true saved believer, your testimony, your works based on Torah to the covenant of marriage will dictate whether you are part of the second exodus gathering or not and to receive your inheritance in the millennial kingdom. Adam, the first man, the first human. It must be clearly understood that before the creation of Adam, humanity, Abba Yahuwah and his son, Yahushua, at some point coordinated and an everlasting covenant was initiated from the heart of the Father Yahuwah to make man in their image in the order of Melchizedek with terms and conditions so they could tabernacle, so they could fellowship, and so they could live in their sight this was a spiritual covenant with spiritual bodies it was a world of the living in the spirit satan has inverted this concept what we know as the matrix the world of the spiritually dead anyone can claim to be saved but spiritually they are dead in the matrix i need you to know that your color your race your religion has zero to do with being his people of the covenant However, anyone who joins himself to Yahuwah to guard his covenant of love with Messiah in them in humility, those are his people. And the reason I say that because all 12 tribes were broken off. When Yahuwah created Adam, he was privileged to fellowship with Abba Yahuwah directly as king and high priest. He was to live an eternal life. He was to have dominion and authority over the whole earth and everything in it. He had the allotal title of the earth, but Adam sold his birthright as the first fruit of creation through sin. He was to till the ground six days and rest on the Sabbath. He was not to monetize his dominion freely given to him as gifts. Love initiated in his heart to love and serve Yahuwah voluntarily in all his loving instructions of the everlasting covenant. So to confirm, before Adam sinned, he was to live eternal forever in the image of Elohim in the order of Melchizedek, outside of time. Time on earth began when they sinned. He was 30 years old after being created. 
Consequently, 4,000 years later, the second Adam was born and he died for us to restore us back and to give us that dominion and authority that Adam lost. It is now almost 2,000 years since he died and resurrected. In the year 2030, it'll be 2,000 years. If you subtract seven, we arrive at 2023. And this is why I'm proposing that the tribulation will start this year on April 2nd at Pesach. In Messiah, we are promised the same millennial kingdom if we are part of the great, those that keep the commandments and teach others to do so in Messiah. The least will live in the nations and the defiant will be thrown into Sheol, hell. Hasatan beguiled Adam with the fruit. He beguiled Yasharal in the desert with the golden calf. And he has beguiled all of us to believe that the Torah of truth is bondage and is not valid. The messenger of the covenant is the second Adam. What is the original course of man to follow? It is the ancient paths found in Jeremiah 18, 15. When they said, let us make man in our image and likeness, this man would be made in the messianic order of Yahushua HaMashiach, in the Melchizedek priesthood. The perfect image of righteousness where Adam failed, Yahushua succeeded. Man has an order. We are to follow instructions. Torah is an order. It is an instruction manual that keeps us in covenant relationship with our father Yahuwah. In John 12, 26, Yahushua tells us, He who serves me, let him follow me. Meaning, let him follow the order. Let him imitate me. Let him walk exactly as I walk. Let him follow the same course. Let him follow me in unity. Let him walk in the way of the everlasting covenant. If man is to have dominion over the sea, cattle, creeping things of the earth, man must have an order to identify what is clean and what is unclean, just as Noah did before Moses. A true student of Yahushua will teach others what is clean and unclean and the difference from profane and unprofane and to be blameless in all your ways, walking balance in all your thoughts, actions, words, and demeanors. The 144,000, the first fruits in Messiah, will have all dominion and authority given to them because they will be blameless before Yahuwah, walking in perfect covenant. Again, I can't say this enough that the goal of the enemy of our souls, Hasatan, is to use today's watchmen and leaders who are well-meaning but spiritually asleep to do Satan's work out of ignorance, meaning they lack the knowledge of Yahuwah, of the covenant and of his Torah, the way of Yahuwah to the everlasting covenant, the good news. Transitioning from the old to the new covenant. This is is an overview of the new covenant. If you recall, Yahuwah made a covenant with Abraham in Genesis and extended its promises to Abraham's seed. As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, Abraham, and you shall be a father of many nations. Neither shall your name any more be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your seed after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be an Elohim unto you and to your seed after you. Bereshit chapter 17, verse 4 through 5 and 7. So we see here that Yahuwah's covenant was between himself and Abraham, but extended it to Abraham's seed as an everlasting covenant. Everlasting means Eternal, never ending. So let's look at the following passage. And Yahuwah said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be baruched in him. 
For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of Yahuwah to do justice and judgment, that Yahuwah may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Genesis chapter 18, verse 17 and through 19. Beloved, as we learned in prior videos, there are four zones of our allotted inheritance, and it has to do with righteousness and mishpatim. Beloved, this passage right here reveals the condition that must be met by Abraham and his seed so that the promise may be manifested. That condition is called keeping the way of Yahuwah. The first disciples in Messiah were called followers of the way. They were followers of the messenger of the covenant who were fulfilling the conditions set forth in Genesis by walking as Messiah walked. Yahushua fulfilled the covenant terms and condition that religion tells us they are bondage nailed to the cross. This covenant condition is an important part of Yahuwah's covenant. And we will recall this when we look at Yahshurel as our example and warning. It is this condition that the Israelites, while in the wilderness, did not fulfill, except for Joshua and Caleb of the original generation that was brought out of Egypt. The word tells us they had a different spirit, unlike the rest. The rest had a spirit of error and a spirit of iniquity. Beloved, I ask you in love, are you fulfilling the covenant condition of the covenant that you are keeping? Yahshua was to be enslaved and afflicted for 400 years. And in Genesis chapter 15, verse 16 through 18, the word of Elohim tells us that then in the fourth generation, they will come here again. For the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet full. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a flaming lamp, a menorah, went between those pieces. On that same day, Yahuwah cut a covenant with Abram, saying unto your seed, I have given this land. This seed is Messiah. In this verse, we have two Aleph Tavs meaning that Yahushua is present, and it is Yahushua who's given this covenant to Abraham. He is the Aleph and the Tav. And if you recall in Genesis 15, 11, some birds of prey came and he scared them off. These were demonic spirits, beloved. You see, Satan is always in the mix. He's always trying to get us to not fulfill the Father's will. And in Genesis chapter 12, verse 7, it reads, And Yahuwah appeared to Abram and said, To your seed I give this land. And this is confirmed in Galatians 3, verse 16. But the promises that were spoken to Abraham and to his seed, he does not say, And to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Messiah, Messiah is the messenger of the covenant. He is the smoking furnace like a refiner's fire and a flaming lamp, the menorah light of Torah. Galatians 3.29 And if you belong to Hamashiach, then you are the seed of Abraham, Avinu, our father of the Amunah, and you are heirs according to the promise. And this is confirmed in Isaiah 53.10 that Yahushua shall see his seed so for the record, there's a people that say that this land belongs to them. Yet scriptures tells us that this land belongs to Messiah. And only in him can he restore the nation of Yasharal. Yes, there is people that live there that do serve him, but that is not the nation, the scriptural nation of Yasharal. That is not the scriptural nation of Israel, according to scripture. Messiah Yahushua will establish his nation as his people when he returns and gather us out of all the nations in the second exodus. Then he will restore his nation and he will give that nation for our inheritance. Are we really transitioning to the new covenant? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? 
It doesn't look like it. It looks to me that the Abrahamic covenant that was given by Messiah to Abraham is the new covenant. But you discern and search out the matter for yourself. Mishpoka, family of Yahuwah, we have been Hellenized to think Greek in an emotional mindset. The Hebrew mindset is this, there's nothing new under the sun that has not been. In 30 AD, Messiah died and resurrected. 2,000 years later, will be in 2030. April 2nd, Passover will mark seven years to 2030, exactly. I believe that the tribulation will start at that time, according to the numbers. Yasharel was in the wilderness for 400 years. If you divide 2,000 by 400, you come up with five. Five times 400 is 2,000. The number five symbolizes the idea of saving, to be saved, to be delivered, to be rescued by the blood, the water, and the Ruach. The blood, the water, the Ruach agree as one, and that is the Father's witness that Yahushua is his son. Starting with the middle letter, Mem, which represents the world in chaos, but it also represents water for the seeds. And we know that the enemy operates out of chaos and it brings order. The enemy's motto is order out of chaos. Chaos is happening right now. So there will bring order. It is Yahuwah that saves or rescue us from the world as we repent, follow and keep his commandments and obey his voice. On either side of the world or the letter Mem are two Hebrew letters that both represent our final destination, our goal. And that is to make it to the promised land, to the, to the land of milk and honey, our allotted inheritance. The letter Ket, that looks like an N, is life or eternal life. And it represents the wall of the sheepfold that divides those who guard the covenant and those who do not. The wheat are hot and the tares are lukewarm. The other letter, Shin is an eternal flame or burning bush that represents the menorah or better, the tree of life with 12 fruits, which represents the 12 tribes, which all represent the messenger of the covenant and eternal life in Messiah. So beloved, what I'm saying is there's a harvest coming as prophesied, but the harvest can only happen when you take hold of the covenant in Messiah to guard it with your life. If you have not come out of the matrix, Father is going to take you out without a choice. You're coming out if you belong to Him. The Elohim of the Hebrews. Every time we see Yahuwah Elohim, it should be noted that it is referring to the Messiah, Yahushua. He was given a great name, a name above all names, and that name was Yahuwah. Yahuwah Elohim, Yahushua, called Moses up to the mountain and Messiah was the burning bush. He was the menorah, the seed of Abraham, the root of the vine, the stump of Yeshaya, the stump of Jesse, the Netzer, the branch, the truth, the way, and life. Shemot chapter 2 verse 24, And Yahuwah Elohim heard Yashorel's groaning, and Elohim remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Shemot chapter 6, verse 6 through 8. Yahuwah Elohim, which is Messiah, told Moses, Say therefore to the children of Yasharel, I am Yahuwah, and I shall bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and shall deliver you from their enslaving, and shall redeem you with an outstretched arm, with great judgments, and shall make you as my people, and I shall be your Elohim, and you shall know that I am Yahuwah your Elohim, who is bringing you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I shall bring you into the land which I swore to give to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, to give it to you as an inheritance. I am Yahuwah. This is crucial to know because there's a pattern found here. And the pattern is that one, Yahuwah remembers his covenant. Then there's a crossing over. 
usually by water, from darkness to light, followed by a third mark, the allotted inheritance. Another reason it's so crucial to know is because religion teaches that there are two paths to eternal life, one for the Jews and one for the Gentiles. And they basically teach this, that the Gentiles are the church, they are the bride, and they who are in Christ are saved then without works to back up their faith, trust, belief unto obedience are taken away in a rapture to heaven. And that is so further from the truth. When you begin to read the scriptures for yourself, he will teach you all things concerning the covenant and the way you should go. The Ruach will teach you all things and cause you to go in the way that you should walk. We will establish that the new covenant that Messiah cut with his blood is the renewed covenant made with Yahshua in Mount Sinai before the golden calf abomination. But is it really the renewed covenant or an everlasting covenant? This covenant, which is hidden to most, is the everlasting covenant initiated in Shamaim. Satan has always opposed Yahuwah's authority and he opposes the authority that Messiah gave us because he wants to be worshipped. He wants to be like the Most High. Then later with Moses, he beguiled them and he caused them to make a golden calf. And today with us, he's also caused us to go in the wrong direction. He has also opposed the authority that Messiah gives us to walk in covenant status. So what is the golden calf today? The golden calf today is that the Torah written by Yahuwah's own finger on our hearts and minds has been done away with, has been abolished at the cross. Christianity takes away from the Torah while Judaism adds to the Torah. These are two wings of the same bird. After Messiah's blood atonement, we lost dominion to the earth and Satan took it away from us. Not because we lost it, because we lacked knowledge. We lacked the knowledge of the covenant. We still have it. And by 325, Satan had given Constantine all authority. He gave him the seat of Moses, the chair of Peter, and authority over the ignorant. And he set up this matrix system. In Exodus chapter 9 verse 1, it reads, And Yahuwah said to Moshe, Go into Pharaoh and speak to him. Thus says Yahuwah Elohim of the Hebrews, Let my people go so they may serve me. If you can see, there's an Aleph and a Tav. This is Yahushua speaking to Moshe. Yahuwah Elohim wanted Yasharel to keep a feast unto him in the wilderness. It was a Shabbat. It was a sign. If he was going to establish them as a nation, the first thing he needed to do is the Shabbat. A Shabbat is the ring of the marriage covenant. It is the sign between Elohim of the Hebrews and his people. We face the same issue today because Satan, Pharaoh, has given us another day in a very sophisticated way and hid Yahuwah's name from us. Messiah was trying to establish the sign between him and his people, which is the Shabbat. This is why the Shabbat is so important, because without the Shabbat, we will not enter into his rest. And this rest that I'm speaking of is the Promised Land. Hebrew means to cross over from darkness to light. This is by way of water. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 8, we read that Adam was put in the garden. However, when Adam was created, he was created outside the garden. Scripture tells us there were four rivers in the area of the Garden of Eden. This means that Adam had to cross over from where he was created into the garden. When the children of Yashorel crossed the Red Sea, 1 Corinthians 10.2 says they were immersed in the cloud and in the sea and they all ate the same spiritual food and they all drank the same spiritual drink from the spiritual rock and that rock was Messiah Yahushua. When we make a confession of faith, of belief and trust to Yahushua, we immerse ourselves. 
the old man stays in the water and we come out regenerated to be set apart to be molded in the image of Yahushua and to walk exactly as he walked Yahuwah, the Elohim of the Hebrews, his doctrine, his instruction manual for his people is called the way of Yahuwah. His ways are not man's ways. Therefore, we cannot mix the set apart as Kodesh with the profane. In his marriage contract to us, we find his name. And we also find the Shabbat sign that lets Satan and the world know that we are his people. Messiah told us in advance that he would reject the foolish virgins for two reasons. One, because they were considered workers of iniquity. They were lawless, according to Matthew 7, 23, which tells us they were in disobedience to the law of Moses. Their testimony to the covenant is without faith, without emunah, trust and belief. Number two, he did not know them. They avoided the everlasting covenant provision that allows his born-again people to know him by keeping his Shabbats and be made ready. They never came out of the matrix. Before and after the golden calf. In Exodus chapter 19, verse five and six a, it reads, now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a co-desk nation. This is before the golden calf. This is when Yahuwah himself gave Moses the two tablets of stone from Shamaim. These were from heaven. The firstborn male of each family was a priest meaning they were a kingdom of priests, not a kingdom with priests, but a kingdom of priests. And this covenant was given to them under the Melchizedek order. It was a spiritual covenant. After the golden calf, we read in Numbers chapter 3, verse 11 and 12, that Yahuwah spoke to Moshe saying, Behold, I have taken the Levites from among the people of Israel instead of every firstborn who opens the womb among the people of Yasharel. And as you can see, there is an olive and a tov right here. So it is Messiah Yahushua speaking in behalf of his father, Yahuwah, as it always has been. So we can say without a doubt that before the golden calf, the everlasting covenant that was given to them was under the Melchizedek order and it was a spiritual covenant. After the golden calf, Father was going to kill every single one of them because they broke the blood covenant. But Moshe interceded and he said, take my name out of the book of life. And he could do that because he was a high priest at that time of the Melchizedek order. Yahuwah Elohim told him, I'm going to kill every single one of them and start fresh with you. This shows Yahuwah Elohim's unmerited favor. However, he did kill the ones responsible for making the golden calf, except for Aaron, but everyone else were killed. And 1 Kephas 2 verse 9 confirms this. It says, But obeying the covenant with Messiah in you, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a kingdom of priests, a Kodesh nation, a people of a treasured possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. After Messiah came and died for us and resurrected, we were supposed to be a kingdom of priests and a Kodesh nation. Not Christians, not Judaism, not bishops, not Presbyterians, not any of that. We were supposed to walk in the way as the original believers, but we didn't. The spiritual house that Yahushua built, it fell because it was infiltrated. But the good news is that Yahushua is restoring it today at this moment and he's building it stronger than ever. 
Are you part of it, beloved? In Matthew chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, Yahukunan said, I have a need to submit to your tevila, to your immersion, and yet you come to me. But in answering him, Yahushua said, Permit it now, for thus it is proper to fulfill all righteousness in Yahuwah. In the book of Numbers, the firstborn of every family who was a priest, they all went and laid hands on the Levites, and they passed the priesthood to them. John was a Levite. He was a Zara. He was the high priest of his time. It was not Caiaphas. And he passed the Melchizedek order back to Yahushua. This also fulfills Daniel chapter 9 verse 24. And because Yahushua was to bring everlasting righteousness. So again, John, who was the Levitical Zadok high priest, passed the Melchizedek priesthood back to the firstborn of Yahuwah. I want to now bring clarity to the Ten Commandments because it is the Ten Commandments that are written on our hearts and our minds, which are the Ten Marriage Words. However, if you remember in the wilderness, Yahuwah was going to give them the whole Torah. But they said, but as Yahuwah's voice grow louder and louder as a shofar, the mountain quake and it thundered and the people became afraid. And they said to Moshe, let us not hear the voice of Yahuwah lest we die. They could not handle the truth. Then they said, all that Yahuwah tells you, we will hear and we will do. This is the marriage agreement. These are the marriage vows. They will hear and do. All the inspired words of Yahuwah are being entrusted to you. And now when you make a confession of Emunah, a confession of faith, According to Romans 10, with your mouth, you are to hear and do and live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahuwah. Because we are not to live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahuwah. According to the Torah in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3. And here's confirmation, Numbers 8 verse 10. And you shall bring the Levites before Yahuwah and the children of Yahshua, the firstborn priests, shall lay their hands on the Levites. And the priesthood was transferred. And this is the reason they had to fulfill all righteousness. Because this is where Adam failed and Yahushua was perfect. He was Yashar and Tamim. The blood of the Lamb of Yahuwah is our surety bond. Meaning that the promises will stand. All the promises to the covenant will be given to us if we guard the covenant with our lives. How many covenants were confirmed in the wilderness? And how many times did Yahuwah renew the original covenant? Before the golden calf, the covenant promised to Abraham was given in the order of Melchizedek to Yasharal with the mixed multitude from other nations with the ten words and the rest of the Torah. Number two, after Moshe as high priest pleaded with Yahuwah not to consume them, Yahuwah's compassion was demonstrated when he renewed the covenant, but in the Levitical priesthood with the same terms and conditions. This is the Old Covenant. Number three, before entering into His rest, which is the Promised Land, Yahuwah Elohim renewed the covenant with the second generation and warned them not to abandon the covenant terms. And this is found in Deuteronomy 29 verse 5. Here, Yahuwah renewed the covenant with Caleb Joshua and the second generation after 40 years. In Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 12 and 13 it reads, Today you will enter the sworn covenant of Yahuwah your Elohim, which Yahuwah your Elohim is cutting with you, that He may establish you today as His people, and that He may be your Elohim as He promised you, and as He swore to your fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is not only with you that I'm making this covenant and this oath, but with whoever is standing here with us today before Yahuwah Eloheinu, and also with whosoever is not here with us this day. This day is your day, beloved. Today, beloved, 
you can also renew the covenant in Messiah's blood. The prophet like unto Moshe. In your own time, the way in your own relationship with Yahuwah. You can repent of all the inherited lies, your generational curses, and for your sins and for your ancestors' sins to make you whole, to repair the breach, repent, make a confession, to serve Him in Ruach and truth, and be immersed in Yahushua's name. The new covenant in the New Testament is the original covenant made with Abraham and given to Yahshua before the golden calf. Today, it's in the Messiah's blood with better promises. Before the golden calf, Yahuwah, Elohim, which is Messiah, walked with them outside. He was the cloud by day and the fire by night. He was there with them. But today, He's not outside. He's inside us. He is Messiah in us. That's the difference. It is a renewed covenant because it was given only to Yahshua Rao. And therefore, the 12 gates in the New Jerusalem are for the 12 tribes. This same covenant was cut with the blood of Yahushua and ransoms us from the death penalty position we acquired before we made a confession and before we were immersed. We receive the gifts of the Ruach as a bridal down payment and He then entrusts us with His word towards eternal life. We have a will. We can either serve Him or not. It is not mandatory to serve Him. You don't have to. You don't have to do anything. You're, that decision is yours. If you don't want to obey Torah, that decision is yours. But if you do want to go beyond and above and you want to enter into His rest, like so many of us are so hungry and we thirst for the living waters, then you will go above and beyond to serve Him because you love Him. So let's review. The Old Covenant, also known as the Old Testament, is not Genesis to Malachi. The Old Covenant, also known as the Old Testament, is not the Everlasting Covenant initiated in Shamaim or before the Golden Calf. The Old Covenant is the covenant that was renewed in the Levitical priesthood after the Golden Calf abomination. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 12, For when there is a changing of the guard of the priesthood, this necessarily also affects the Torah as well. Galatians chapter 3 verse 24 Wherefore the Levitical law was our schoolmaster, our trainer to lead us to Messiah. The Levitical priesthood was a temporary priesthood because of their hearts. They were very carnal, nothing new under the sun. And it was supposed to lead them to Mashiach. It was supposed to train them to enter in again to the Melchizedek order. This is a love story between Yahushua and his bride. And he is given her every chance and opportunity to make right with him, to come together. And that's what he's doing today. This is why this message was so important to make. Because I pray and I seek him before I make a video. And he leads me. I won't make a video unless I'm not led to make it. This is the subject he wanted me to talk about. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 Nevertheless, the foundation of Yahuwah stands certain. It stands firm, having this seal. Yahuwah knows them that are His. And let everyone that names the name of the Hamashiach, Yahushua, depart from iniquity. And Elohim remembered His covenant with Abraham, Yitzhak, and Jacob. In Exodus chapter 2 verse 24, Yahuwah Elohim remembered his covenant with Abraham, Yitzhak, and Jacob. Second witness, Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 13 that we just read, Yahuwah Elohim swore an oath and a covenant to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahuwah Elohim had remembered his covenant forever. 
the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. This is 70,000 years, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Yasharel for an everlasting covenant. Psalms chapter 105 verses 8 to 10. Here we see Yahuwah's view of his covenant. We see that Yahuwah only has one covenant for his people. Yet, he has expanded this covenant in nature and in scope. Each time it was made, it was renewed, it was reaffirmed and confirmed to successive generations. Men have called it by many names. Men call it many covenants. But Yahuwah calls it his covenant, one covenant, an everlasting covenant. Notice that this verse tells us that the same law that was given to Jacob, who became Yasharel, is given to Yasharel as an everlasting covenant. Yahuwah Elohim's covenant is a sworn oath. It has a Torah and has an order. Remember, the Torah is an order that keeps us in covenant relationship status with the Father Yahuwah. And we are to serve Yahuwah through Yahushua and follow Him, walk in His manner, walk in the course, walk in the order, imitate Him, walk exactly as He Himself walked. And now here's a fourth witness that confirms His covenant. It's found in Luke chapter 1, verse 72 to 73. Yahuwah Elohim has demonstrated His rakamin, His promise to our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov and has remembered his Brit HaKodesh, his set-apart covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham. A most important part in the bride making herself ready is that we must become royal priests, Kohenim, by an oath and a covenant. It is only through being in covenant status through the priesthood of Melchizedek, being righteous, that we receive power and magnify our calling. To not only guard the covenant, but by living by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahuwah. To enable us to fulfill the great commission mandate as a light to the nations and receive eternal life with a new name written on a white stone. And when I mean a light to the nations, I mean those that do not know the new covenant, that are not guarding it. That is what we're supposed to do. That is the way of Yahuwah, and that is the good news, is that Yahushua has renewed the covenant with us so that we can be in covenant status and receive eternal life. Now the Elohim of Shalom that brought again from the dead our master Yahushua, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do His will. These are the divine loving instructions written in Shamaim that we are to do on earth as it is in Shamaim, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Yahushua HaMashiach. This is Messiah in you. This is you fulfilling the commandments with Messiah in you. Here we see that the blood of Yahushua that has redeemed us is called the blood of the everlasting covenant. This is a clear indicator that all who are partakers of Yahushua's blood, His redemption, are partaking in Yahuwah's everlasting covenant. Also, we see that Yahuwah calls it new, literally renewed, but in a greater sense, it is the everlasting covenant initiated in Shamaim. This is why I say that when you made a solid confession and it was it was a heartfelt confession, even in the name of Jesus. You were never taught the terms and conditions of the covenant. So you never kept the Shabbat. You never kept the feast. And these are very, very important to enter into the covenant and to guard it. My hope is that you are able to see with clarity that Yahuwah does not change. He cannot change or alter the covenant or the terms and conditions because of your programming and because of your hearts of stone and because of your lack of knowledge, and because you do not study the Torah without asking Him to give you the revelation, to fill you with the Surah, to give you the spirit of fire. It is of the most importance that you understand clearly that when you were immersed and made a confession of faith to Messiah, 
You were not told vital information to maintain your salvation. So you have not been in covenant status as a set-apart believer with fear and trembling. It is your due diligence to search out the scriptures for yourself to see what this oath is and the covenant of the royal priesthood. Again, do not depend on someone else to interpret your eternal destination. But now in Yahushua HaMashiach, you can repair the breach of the covenant that has been broken to raise the foundation built upon the rock and restore the ancient paths to be a set-apart dwelling place with your temple bodies according to Isaiah 58 verse 12. In closing, Yahushua HaMashiach fulfilled the terms and conditions of the everlasting covenant. He fulfilled all righteousness when Adam failed. In your Bibles, the way of Yahuwah is the good news, not the gospel, the good news, the Bezorah of Messiah, that Abba Yahuwah once again renewed his everlasting covenant and gives everyone an opportunity to be grafted in into his household called Yasharal. And he wants love to initiate from our hearts and to love him and to serve him voluntarily so that you too fulfill the terms and conditions of the way of Yahuwah with Messiah and you. And Mishpoka, and I thank you, and Shalom. I pray that Messiah Yahushua guides you, reveals to you, and leads you to the way of Yahuwah so that you may be in covenant status and receive a white rock with a new name.